Hey guys, how are we doing? I haven't made a video in a little while because uh, I'm not really working on anything because I can't. But uh, what I figured I could do is take a little walk down memory lane on uh, a bunch of pictures I have of uh, miscellaneous cars and car related stuff. And I figured I'd take you along for a little journey. And uh, so without further ado, here we go. Probably start with, uh, let me just set up. Start with the album. We got a ways to go. <laughs> Grab a snack. Uh, I'll probably start with um, my Plymouth Satellite first. This is um, probably like 1983, right around there. Um, this is on High Point Mountain in uh, New York State. And uh, the story behind this car is I, I paid 300, a little over 300 bucks, like 330, something like that. And uh, it was seven different colors, um, all of them fluorescent. <laughs> you know, the colors you use for a black light. Not quite sure what the kid was thinking, but each like fender and door and quarter panel had a different color on it. Um, I cleaned it up real quick and put a um, uh, school bus yellow paint job on it in my parents' garage when they were away on vacation. <laughs> There's another one of it. And one more. It looked really good. I just kind of planned on tooling around on it for the summer. Really had no you know, intentions of anything, so I just kind of did a quickie bondo job, cleaned her up, and uh, away she goes. Um, at that point in my life, I, I talked about it once before when with the car. I actually used that car for when I uh, I quit drinking, and uh, all the efforts and money and time that I would use for drinking, I put into that car. So that worked out so well for me, I decided to quit smoking. <laughs> and that's what I bought. That's a... Uh, 69 Mustang Coupe, not the fancy. Paid a hundred bucks for it. 302. As you can see, she was in such a lovely shape. Um, actually, in the background, you can see uh, that was my driver. That was a um, a 77 Granada uh, Monarch with a uh, 302. Piece of shit. <laughs> Here's another shot of the Mustang. Unfortunately, I didn't get many shots of the actual tearing down and repairing. I think there might be one or two. Uh, just kind of, that was the before. I didn't live that far from, uh, that was that, actually in New Jersey, um, uh, Raceway Park, English Town. And I would go to the swap meet. And at that time, which was early 80s, you can get each each and every part. I think I, I got like a hood for like 40 bucks. I got a fender for 30 bucks. Not like that anymore. Here's the garage I was working in. I think the hood of the Mustang is open in that picture. Here, there's the interior. More of the interior before you can see the quarters rotted out. I, and uh, I did all the metal work on this. I did not own a welder. The only thing I had was oxyacetylene torches. So everything was uh, not brazed together. It was actually welded together. Thanks for some warpy panels. There's the new hood. I think I put like, um, you know, I was cheap then, cheap now too, uh, 500 bucks in that car maybe. I painted it in that garage too. That was the original color. Aztec Aqua was the color. And then you can see the uh, satellite popped into the picture and got painted. That was like a quickie. I just did that over the course of a week and I had it stashed away. I was only allowed to have two cars, one that I drove and and one that uh, I was working on. But I, of course I had to go buy that satellite when I saw it. So uh, that was stashed away in a barn. I painted the interior panels white. I don't know, I thought it would look good. Don't ever do that, that yeah, sucks. You get so much glare off of that, you can't even drive it. <laughs> There's the two of them together, me doing some wrenching. This is, um, actually after I started doing some repairs on it, um, I had already moved. This is up in um, Massachusetts in Peabody, apartment I rented. You see I'm doing a quarter panel on it. I actually did both quarter panels. What I was doing in this picture, um, I had so much paint on it over the years that uh, I actually took paint stripper and I, go, I would just take each piece a day and strip all the paint off of it with paint stripper. And then of course welded up some, uh, at that point I bought a, a MIG welder, a 110 MIG welder. Um, that was probably like 1989, right around there. And uh, when big welders just started coming out, I bought one from Sears. There it is, again at my parents' house up on the hill when it was yellow. 
I liked it more yellow than I do um, white, that's for sure. And that's when it was all done at a car show. There's another one right next to it, you can see. And girlfriend at the time, now to be my wife. What else we got in this album? Not a very good picture, but uh, this was my driver when I was up here. This is a 78 Bronco. Three-tone green, the ugliest green you've ever seen. <laughs> Uh, it was outside a company I worked for, American Science and Engineering. They made um, uh, x-ray machines. You know, when you go to the airport, you scan your baggage. Uh, they were the guys who made that. There's a bug I had at my brother's house back when I still lived in New Jersey. I was probably uh, 19, something like that. I think it's the size of the tires on it. I think it's got uh, 31s on it all the way around. I think that's it for that album. Yeah. All right, now we can go down to the sit-down portion of this. Yeah. Hey, Mo. What's going on, buddy? Might as well continue with um, the Plymouth. Let's see what we got. Okay. We got. Um, let's set the camera. Up. It was. Uh, I lived in a. When I first moved up here, one of the, you go from apartment to apartment when you're young and you're not making much money, sharing rooms. So. Um, I lived in an apartment that you only parked on the street, and this is the uh, the outcome of parking on the street. The, um, someone was coming up the hill, went to go make a left turn, slammed on the brakes, slid around, and stuffed it right in the quarter panel. And that one, has another shot of it. Just took those for insurance reasons, now I have them for memories. <laughs> it didn't take out the, the B pillar really bad. Um, once I popped the quarter panel off in the other picture, it came back pretty good. And uh, moving forward after that, this is where um, the next apartment I lived was actually a room in a house. And if you look on the, let me grab a pen. If you look on the left hand side, you can, can see a, like a lean to shed garage. It was just, I think I had three inches on each side of the car to get it in the garage door. And that was pretty much it. You had to pull it out to work on it. And um, again, I was stripping, you can see that, that back deck lid has no, no paint on it whatsoever. And uh, that's what was in the process of uh, using paint stripper and just stripping everything off of it. And then I would just prime it with spray bombs. More of it. And here what we got. You got one. I think it's at my next apartment. All done. Uh, there's one. Here's one I want to show. Well, here's uh, when I brought it into the big garage, doing some body work on it. That same quarter. Got her all kind of straightened away and metal patched in her. And after I was done, I did not paint this one because I didn't have the capacity or the room to do it. And uh, I hired someone to paint it for me. And uh, when it came back, it came back all nice and pretty white. And somebody else talked me into making it white. Uh, don't listen to other people. Paint your car the color you want. But uh, again, it still didn't look bad. You can tell I didn't have the moldings on the side of it yet. Another one of it. And another one. And another one, and you can see that was my another daily driver, which was a 1980 Toyota pickup. Great truck till the frame rotted in half, and uh, the bed was against the cab, the only thing holding it together. And there's another one. And I think this one, this is the same apartment. I actually it was the third floor walk up. Was um, uh, a hurricane was coming. I'm trying to think of what the name of the hurricane was. I think it was the one where. Um, uh, the ones in Gloucester there, the, the uh, perfect storm. And this is not far from Gloucester. It's probably only 10 miles away. And um, to give you an idea, the whole the whole eastern seaboard got smacked. Well, this is my uh, way of protecting the car. There was a bunch of trees up in the back of the hill, and I didn't want them to be uh, the car to be uh, affected by that or get water in it. So I uh, had like three different tarps over the thing and about 35 different bungee cords wrapped around it trying to keep it uh, <laughs> safe. And it did survive. That's that guy. Uh, what we got? We got some Mustang ones here. More Mustang ones from the. Here it is. Uh, uh, just after being painted, those are just painting wheels that are on it. And uh, see what else we got? Yeah. There's another one. And another daily, another daily driver. Before, back when I still lived in. Uh, New Jersey, that is a, use a pen. That's an 82 Toyota pickup my brother brought, bought new. 
Uh, I believe we got rid of that with a uh, went from him to me. I think I had 310,000 miles on it. The tranny was going in it, so I got rid of it. And uh, I believe he, the junkyard, used it for the junkyard car for another few years after that. The, the, the truck just didn't want to die. This is me uh, checking out the balance of the tires. Had to rotate them. And there she is, all kind of purdy and done. Let's see if I can move my camera out a little bit better. Yeah. There we go. That's with the Mustang all done. Uh, we're at some camp for the weekend. And again, uh, when I moved up to uh, Massachusetts, that um, my only two drivers I had was the that Mustang and the Satellite. Those are my two cars. I actually moved here in the Satellite. Uh, put my stuff in it and started a new life. And there we are um, at a friend's that uh, he had a, a camp. It was up in New Hampshire, I think, somewhere. And uh, that was a, he was into Cougars. I love Cougars too. Um, he had this parts car. I needed a trans for mine. I took that trans out of that car and put it in that car all in one shot. Nothing like crawling around in the dirt, right? I don't know. We want to go with it. We'll go with. Um, Alright, we'll go with this one. The uh, My dog thinks I'm talking to myself. Remember that uh, ugly three-tone puke green Morocco? Yeah, there's another another daily driver. Need something besides the old cars. Old cars. And yes, this is 78. This is much newer than the, the ones that were 10 years older, right? Um, that thing was so hideous. Uh, that company that I worked for, American Science and Engineering, I went and uh, I think I told the story once before. I painted a <laughs> I painted a car in a car wash. One of those ones you put the quarters in at uh, two o'clock in the morning. I uh, pulled it in. I would mask off everything. And uh, the company that I worked for, we had. Um, um, spray bombs for touching up different things on the the vans and I'll show you them later but they got the wrong color they got um off-white or antique white whatever you want to call it when they were supposed to get bright white so they had a couple of cases of that left over they're just like you want it and I'm like sure so I uh, painted my Bronco with them in the car wash at two o'clock in the morning I remember a cop pulled in one time I just kind of pretended like I was washing it I don't know why you would wash it with newspaper all over it taped to it but uh that was the end result. Kind of got it from being uh, three-tone green. And um, after I got a little bit of money after that, I think about uh, 100 bucks or so, we went and uh, went back to the parents' house. <laughs> My poor parents. And uh, we painted it red. And uh, that's kind of what you see there. Unfortunately, it's a dark picture, but uh, you get the idea. And that's, actual, that's actually real paint, single stage. But uh, we got her back to a, a more desirable color. Alright, done with those. Come on, go lay down. Get, go lay down. Go on. You're making me nervous. We'll put that in the done pile. And we might as well continue on with uh, another one I had was uh, uh, 80, 80, mid 80s um, Ram Charger. I kind of like the uh, those style of trucks at that time. They were kind of big, and, you know urban redneck and you can see my my boat in the background that's inside the truck check out the hair huh it's not even gray I took a trip to Nova Scotia in it we used it as a camper there was an air mattress in the back of it we slept in it and uh, girlfriend at the time now the wife we went exploring up there Another one. typical tourist I got uh, sweatpants on it to say Boston great truck but the front end was so sloppy that thing was all over the road and we are on top of a hill, and here we are, uh, got the mountain bikes on the back, and I uh, said there was an air mattress in the back, and that's kind of how we, uh, that's how we rolled back then, when we were young and dumb. What else we got? Let's start doing some of the singles. That was a 66 Mustang I had. I bought that car for like, um, ooh, 800 bucks, something like that, six cylinder, plain Jane, nothing fancy. And uh, just did a, a quickie clean up on it. And I think I flipped it for five grand. Yeah, it was probably ooh, 15 years ago or so. You can see my garage is already built back there. So that was uh, 96 that that was built. So it was probably like 97, 98. 
Oh, so you got some good stuff. Let's go with uh, this guy. Too bad I don't have a side picture of it. It's a, a doom buggy um, that someone purchased in a strip club <laughs> because they uh, had too many too many alcoholic beverages, and then they had to resell it afterwards. They're, they're, the deal was they had to. Uh, um, it was on the dance floor in the strip club, and the guys wanted to party in the thing and sit in the in the bug and. And the doom buggy and the owner said no and the guy said how about if i buy it can we hang on it tonight and the guy said sure so um he did not remember too much of doing that but uh, the next morning a wrecker showed up and the thing backed in his driveway he's like what the hell am i going to do with it so uh i came along and bought it one more shot of it hang out with 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 me mum flame job was really cool on it. and had the hard top that came off too bad there wasn't a side shot of it, it looked it looked awesome but um uh, Glad for the pictures they do have, I guess. This one is pretty cool. This is um, a uh, 61 Ford um, F100 unibody. Unibody making it the bed and the cab. Let's see if we can see it better on this one. The bed and the cab are all in one piece. The bed's not separate. That's why they, they call it a unibody. Um, it had a 292 motor in it. I bought that truck for 1200 bucks thousand bucks right around there uh, when I bought it it had a tree that came down across the hood it was a really clean truck other than that everything you see on there is what was on there and um, so I, I straightened out the hood because uh, it was flat flat like a pancake but I, I got it to resemble what it should but I just never got around to painting it and then I sold that I probably had that for eh, three or four years kind of like I, pretty much how I am with all of them. I, I kind of have them for a while and then I then I get out of them and uh, you know flip them and get something new. This kind of keeps it interesting. Uh, that truck was a converted, it was a two-wheel drive converted to a four-wheel drive, but it worked really well. Uh, manual steering, manual brakes, a bit of a bear to drive. Uh, let's go with uh, one of my Cougars. This here is uh, Kind of good they have these pictures because insurance companies, Grundy, used to make you have to take a picture and you'd have to mail it in and they would sure insure you. That's the only reason why I have these pictures. It's a 69 Cougar. Um, it was painted when I got it, uh, but it just it just needed all the finishing touches. It was missing missing like the uh, the belt trim moldings and just a bunch of stuff that was just meatballed on it. So um, again, it's kind of the same color as that truck was. It's like a burgundy, burgundy wine color. That was a really fun car. Love Cougars. One of my first cars, my first car actually was a '63 Beetle. You can actually see the uh, there's the um, the truck in the background. And actually, right here is the uh, I think that's the satellite covered right there. My first car was a '63 Beetle when I was uh, 13. That was something I was supposed to restore and use, but uh, I lived across the street from a sand pit, and the sand pit. Uh, Loved the Beetle too much, so it uh, turned into a Baja, and then it turned into nothing. <laughs> so uh, the first actual car um, I had was a uh, 70 Chevy pickup, and uh, me and uh, Chevy didn't have uh, good luck with motors, so that didn't last very long, and I, I bought a 69 Cougar, and uh, I terrorized the town of West Milford, New Jersey with that, and the cops terrorized me with tickets. So. Uh, I think uh, you got your license when you're 17. I think I was uh, I lost my license by the time I was 17 and a half. They were the uh, you lost your license when you got to 21 points. I made it to 27 points before they could even catch up to me. So it happens when you grow up watching the Dukes of Hazard and thinking that's how you're supposed to drive everything. This is a uh, a 67 Mustang. I still have this car. It was one that I was working on. It came from California. It, I paid a thousand bucks. Uh, I generally pay about that for, for all my stuff. That's the uh, engine bay, kind of before I started doing anything. And uh, the inside. And I was kind of pissed that uh, I uh, painted um, uh, my car, other car white. Kind of, kind of speed these up a little bit. You can stop them if you want to look at it. I'm, I'm priming the doors, priming the interior. I wanted to change the interior color over. That was probably the original color of the car, which is like a metallic copper looking and then I shot them yellow. Get you a little bit of better frame here. 
shot them yellow. I got a metal wheel for it. Uh, I did the engine bay, engine compartment. It's got a 30, uh, 289 in it. Um, that's a built 289. That's the way it came. It's got Mallory uh, distributor, uh, headers, high rise, Elderbrock intake, and four barrel, etc., etc., etc. Dual exhaust. Um, no one of it. No restored. Another one of the interior. This car is relatively rust free. I probably put about um, eight inch by eight inch piece of steel. If I cut that up, that's probably what I put in through the whole car. And it's still that way today. It's not painted. Uh, life happened. <laughs> I had a, um, a friend, where is he? Um, with a uh, Roadrunner. We were neighbors. And the, uh, the Roadrunner was his car that I went to go help him. So we were working on his Roadrunner the same time I was working on my Mustang. So he actually would bring that over and uh, we would, uh, he would be working on that while I'm working on the Mustang. She was a, it was a really rough car, but uh, it was definitely a Roadrunner. So it was definitely worth saving as you can see. And that's me underneath her doing some uh, Basically, replacing the whole rear half of the car because it was totally gone. There is the whole rear half of the car. There's the floor, the frame rails, <laughs> the drop downs, the trunk extensions. Uh, there's the quarter panel on the side of it. You can see it's got just some uh, flashing on it. And um, you can see it's even rotted out above the flashing. So I've replaced everything from here. The complete trunk, the frame rails from the center back is new. Um, even where the window is, you can see it's rotted up out up here. I don't know if you can see that in the camera. Um, I've made that piece new by hand. So um, all the metal work's done on the car. It's in primer. Um, I got to back up a little bit. Uh, his name was Alan. That was Al Meepow. We were next to neighbors in Beverly. I had the satellite. He looked over the fence and saw that I had the satellite and he had that covered up in his driveway. He had been taking care of his sick mother. So it was like a, a back burner project. And uh, we resurrected the Roadrunner. Unfortunately, uh, Al passed away. Had, uh, had a massive heart attack and uh, at age 49, tough, really tough, uh, great friend, best friend. And um, uh, the family gave me the car and that's why I have the Roadrunner today. And uh, can't never sell it, but uh, sometimes it's hard to work on something. It kind of keeps bringing the memory back. You know, you, you kind of, at some point in life, you need to move on a little bit and, and do some healing. So I, I kind of put it away for a while, but I did do all the metal work on it. So I'm just trying to work on my capacity of painting and get to the point where I could paint better. And uh, eventually that car will come back in and will be painted. Again, all the metal work's done on it. It just needs to be, uh, you know, block sanded and get everything straight and true before I shoot it. And uh, you guys will be seeing some videos on that car soon. What else we got? Let's just get into some silly stuff here. Yeah, it's me and my puppy dog on my gold wing. <laughs> Here's uh, my garage when it was uh, fairly new and fairly empty. You can kind of see there's not that much against the walls yet. Here's the wife on the gold wing. That was the fastest production gold wing they made. Um, 1980, 81, it was 1100. Quick bike. I blow Harleys away with that thing, no problem. Yeah, you're thinking not, but you would. All right, there's another one of the gold wing. There's another bike behind it, not quite sure what that is. And another silly picture of me and the dog on the bike. What else we got here? These are going to be garage pictures. I'll just go right in front of them. And it's, I think, the Mustang with Mustang parts spread over the top of it and trying to protect it. Um, moved here in 95 and uh, built the garage in 96. That's right after the garage was built and painted. And you can see a lot of room in the garage. I was able to put three cars across. See the shop in the background there. It's uh, I had the toolboxes across the back wall, and uh, that kind of sucked. You had to walk from the back to the front of the garage every time you want to work on something. So uh, we changed that. Here's a wood stove in there. It was the first heating system. Uh, there's the Mustang in the garage. I'm working on it, and uh, just my shop setup. That garage was um, I had it built the shell of it and the, and the slab. It was 7,800 bucks, including the slab. 
and um, it's 24 by 30. Okay, what else we got? Let's get over. We're getting close, we're almost there. Uh, that's me hand gliding, taking hand gliding lessons. Me coming in for a landing. And there's another one. That was fun. I have my hang one. Basically, they go from hang one to hang five. I have my first license on it. And uh, we're going to go for my, my second license. And uh, <laughs> the day we went there, the president of the New Hampshire Hang Gliding Association had crashed and died. And uh, I took that as an omen to uh, stop hang gliding. <laughs> so that was the end of my hang gliding career. That is my 16 foot crest liner. We moved by the water, so you had to kind of go keep a, uh, uh, a boat. I love the uh, water. That thing was a uh, just a 16 foot boat. As I said, um, bow rider means the front you could sit in. And it had a 115 Merc on it. That thing can screw. I think blew pretty much any and every boat away, except for the you know the big cigarette boats. But it was so tiny, that uh, and so much power, that uh, it was awesome. Great for uh, water skiing. And that is me at age, I'm gonna say 15, something like that. And you can actually see in the background. Um, I think I have this picture I showed before. Uh, that's my Maverick with a 302 in it, and behind that is another '69 Mustang. And yeah, that's before I had my license. It was like 15 or 16. No garage. All the tools were just worked out of the, the trunks of the uh, the cars. And another camping trip. That's a Ford Ranger I had. Picked that up cheap. I had a bad fifth gear. Actually, I just had a bad bearing, but the truck was uh, pretty much new. It was an 89. I think I bought it in 93 for uh, two grand. I paid for it. And it had like 70,000 miles on it. Four wheel drive. Nice truck. Working on the driveway. Put the wife to work. Actually, she was on her way to work and uh, had her up for a, uh, a photo opportunity. That's me at graduation. You see Mopars were in my blood. That is uh, back in West Milford, New Jersey. That was a 70 duster with a slant six. And um, I partied a lot back then. If you look on the hood, you can see that uh, ridiculous hood scoop. We uh, we had a few alcoholic beverages and it sounded like a good idea to put that hood scoop on there. So I don't even think we screwed it on. I think we just laid Bondo down on the hood, stuck the hood on, <laughs> sanded the Bondo down and then Bondoed over the lip. Never came off, it was on there the whole time. People thought I had a 440 in the thing. I, had a, I think I had a thrush on the exhaust, <laughs> slam six. Um, that thing had up over 300,000 miles on it when I got it. It was a friend of mine's dad's. I paid two butter rolls and a coffee for it. <laughs> he had bought a new car. He was a great shit. Henry's dad. And uh, what's this? This is uh, back when we first moved in here. Uh, that's the little garage. You can see uh, that tractor there. I bought that tractor. We moved here in 95. That's a Gilson uh, hydrostatic tractor, 16 horse single cylinder. It also had a snow blower. I bought that on the day we moved in here because I did not want to deal with snow. Still have that tractor, someday I'll restore it. What else we got? Here's one of the boat. We're at, uh, this is Beverly Harbor. They actually had a, at the time there was a McDonald's that um, had a dock. You could actually pull to the dock, go up, go to the McDonald's, get a bite to eat. And uh, just like you're pulling with a car. And it's the whole gang, the wife. Uh, mother, brother, I think my dad's taking a picture and I'm the, I'm the, I'm the handsome devil up through the hole in the roof. We uh, have a thing for camping. Another Chevy motorhome. And I think we paid 800 bucks for that thing. We travel all over the place with that. Again, my luck with Chevys has never been great. And uh, that one also blew the motor twice. Put a new motor in it. That one went too. They paid for the warranty, but changing a motor in a motorhome sucks. Best way you don't have a garage. This is a bunch of friends. We are in Carlisle, Pennsylvania at the Carlisle Swap Meet. That is my blue Toyota pickup. And that is a racing rear. They had a uh, Mustang 2, like a 76 Mustang 2 Cobra with a 302. And that was the rear end they were going to go put in. That's the one that you could actually change the gear ratios in the, the pumpkin by pulling it for a drag rear. We're loading that up. And this is when I, talk, I told you I worked at that company, American Science and Engineering. These were the white vans I was building. 
um, what they would do is they would catch drug smugglers with them or they would pull up to say like an airport or whatever it was they would let the, the baggage go through one door there's two doors in the van it goes right through the center of it um, you go through uh, the back door they had a, a right here is a con